on maternal mortality. Her association with Travashi International Academy right from the inception of the school till now has been very special and her bond with us continues to grow even today. The very idea of her book, Building a Happy Family, was conceived right here on the majestic campus of FIA. Without much further ado, I welcome Ms. Rageshwari Lumba. Hello, ma'am. Good evening. Hi, Hi Mona Lisa. Thank you for such a beautiful introduction. And now, a big, big, big pranam to all my elders. A big hello to all my lovely admin, the teachers, and the kids. Let's make some noise. That's what I would always say at my beautiful campus. My most favorite campus in the entire world. Sabse pehle to bahut sara pyar to Ratan ji, Sharvari ji, Maruk mom. I always call her Maruk mom because she's she's my mom. She's my other lovely spiritual mom. Right. Bilhan and uh, my Meghu. My goodness, my darling Meghna. She's my sister who lives in Nasik. Thank you, Mona Lisa. That was a beautiful introduction. You. Uh, are you okay? Just give me a hand, uh, you know, thumbs up. It's, it's fine. Y'all can see me. Y'all can hear me. Absolutely, ma'am. Lovely. Great. So thank you, everybody. Thank for... you so much, ma'am, for uh, joining here. And ma'am, over to you. Thank I'm you. Waiting, thank I'm you. waiting for your lovely uh, session. Thank you. Thank you for a lovely introduction, Mona Lisa. And thank you to the entire team at Frabashi for hosting me, hosting Penguin, and hosting Monica Sood, who will be joining us later. Yeah. It's so happy. I have such beautiful memories of uh, Nasik. The first time I came there, thanks to Dr. DP and Prasad, I came there and I was just mesmerized as to how mindfully you all were approaching education. The love that you all had for every person in the echelons. It could be the lovely Thais and the Maushis who are working, the gardeners, our chefs. I still remember Ratanji and Sharuriji, you know, just pampering me and my family. And, uh, you know, all the guests, they always say, if we come to Prabhupada, we don't feel like leaving. Yes, that amazing, most beautiful uh, bungalow that we would live in, that we would actually never spend time in because we had so much fun with the children and the lovely admin. Uh, I know, and you know, Meghna was just um, joking with me that you're not here. And I said, because you all approved my husband. So when I was introduced to Sudhanshu, my beloved parents wanted him to meet Ratanji and Sharvariji. <laughs> so, so it was so amazing. We drove to Nasik and then Ratanji and Sharvariji and Meghna, you know, very uh, intelligently introduced him to Maushis, to all the gardeners, to all the chefs, to see, is he a humble, kind man? You know, <laughs> because if someone is kind and wonderful to people who serve us, that means a person will anyways be kind and loving towards us. So I think kindness and love is not conditional and there should be no discrimination in that. So that's the first point we've made today. So yes, I'm here to promote uh, and to talk about my book, Building a Happy Family. But in today's times, we just don't want to promote the book. I want to have a lovely, soulful, mindful conversation with you all. So right away, uh, like I said, you know, pronoun to all my elders. I want to make space for everybody who's going through this lockdown. We're all going through it together, isn't it? All sailing in the same boat. And perhaps some of us are facing difficult storms. So, you know, I want to make space for any family member. You know, if you've if someone succumbed to the virus, someone is ill, not just for the virus, for anything else for that matter. So I want to make space for them. I want to send my gratitude to all the farmers. I want to send my gratitude to all the healthcare uh, workers, people working the front line, uh, people, the police, uh, our leaders and, and our educationists. So big shout out. And if you're at home, just clap for yourselves. And little children, you should clap for your mamas and papas because they're making it easy for us to stay at home and work. So my book, Building a Happy Family, is talking about mindful parenting, but essentially it's talking about mindfulness. So what is mindfulness? It's like a fancy word, but actually it talks about being in the present, thinking about life now, right here, right now. We think around 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day. 
science proves that. And science also proves that 80 to 90% of these thoughts are negative or repetitive. Now we know that what we consistently think we bring about in our life. So what are we focusing on? We're wasting our precious energy by either thinking about the past, which has got to do with guilt, or thinking about the future, which has to do with worry and anxiety. Now, both these emotions are futile because can you change your past? No. And can you control your future? No. The only thing you have is the present moment. So everything that you want to do should happen now. All the planning should happen now. Don't worry about tomorrow. And the lockdown is the perfect time to practice it. Because you see, we were always stressed. It's not that we were not stressed before the pandemic. We were not grateful even before the pandemic. We were always complaining, always stressful. Uh, so the pandemic is an amazing, amazing portal. If you walk through mindfully, you'll realize, I don't want to regret if I did not enjoy my life. Because I was always complaining. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. Here you go. You have all your time. Now, can you really think about this moment? Parents and corporates complain to me, but yes, we're so stressed about the future, bills to pay. Well, whatever has to happen will happen in the future. We cannot control, but what can we control now? Adaptability. So that is the first major point that I want to talk about, which is adaptability. And we will stress on this when Monica uh, you know, joins us later, that this is a vital point for us to teach our children and us. There are companies I've worked with and who have, you know, employees of over 3,000 uh, employees, call center employees, and they're like, my goodness, we've had to adapt. We were always thinking that 80 to 90% of our staff can actually work from home, but we did not have the systems in place. The moment the pandemic hit us and the moment there was lockdown, we had to adapt overnight. I mean, look at me for that matter, adaptability. Uh, I was supposed to be in India. I was supposed to be in your campus promoting my debut book, which was such a big dream. I was coming back into work, you know, after Samaya, your little Samaya with your blessings. She's four. I was supposed to be with y'all, but I had to adapt. And we say, well, we can have a tour right here virtually. So we consistently think about currency in the dynamics of only money, but there are different forms of currency. Today, this is the currency of exchange. I'm building bonds with you all. And I know that once things open up, there'll be a whole lot of business that we will do in diverse myriad forms. So in the same way, this is a message for corporates, for professionals, for teachers. Continue to invest in relations because this will never go out of style. Continue to adapt, continue to learn all about how can I get my business online? So no matter what, even if things don't change, our work will continue. People talk to me about how can I get better jobs? Well, there are so many opportunities if you will just ask, make a list of all the people you wish to connect with. Now this is for youngsters to think about as well. Who are the people? Can I be an online contributor? Can I be an online assistant? There is so much. If you're great at building videos, creating videos, this is the time for you. How do I adapt my business into an online business today? Look at how brilliantly Fravashi has adopted uh, where adaptability is concerned. Here you are. You already do have the Fravashi School's virtual summer camp 2.0 that's starting from Monday, 25th May, besides all the other things that we're doing. So that's your first lesson. Now, students will be very excited to know that 66 million years ago, when the asteroid hit our planet, we lost the strongest species, right? Dinosaurs. Who were the ones who adapted? Or the mammals. Now, scientists say it was not because of a low extinction rate, but mammals were focused how they could adapt. How can they adjust? How can they keep together their spirits and change? So that's very important. Good important message for us and our children. No matter what happens, I can adapt. And we'll talk about a very interesting uh, scientific uh, you know, experiment that NASA did on adaptability when Monica comes. And Monica is hearing us. So Monica, you must remind me when you come to start with the 30-day NASA program, 
So I want you all to stay tuned till then. So let's go with all the lovely questions that you all have asked us. I'm very, very upset that Ratanji, Shelriji and Maruk mom have not asked me any questions. But that's okay. I have so many friends at Pravashi. So thank you, Mrs. Prachekta. She sent how to pacify a hyperactive child, especially when the energy is utilized in television and mobiles and when that is the easiest way to keep them occupied on their own. I'm sure you're talking about the current era. And listen, if you're talking to me, I feel you because I have a hyperactive child, Samaya. But let's be mindful. So I talked about being in the present moment. Children are very mindful because they remain present. And yes, if you're talking about a hyperactive child, observe them. So I can talk to you with experience that I have a pattern that I see in her. That when she wakes up, she's really calm. She eats her breakfast. And then after breakfast, if I haven't given her her physical activity, she's go, she goes absolutely insane. So thankfully here in London, we are still allowed to take them out once a day for, for exercising. So I actually put her on a bike and I make sure just before lunch, we give her that one hour of massive exercise, even if it is just walking steps. So you want to make sure that you actually engage them, make sure that they release all their physical expression, their energy is concerned. That's how you pacify a hyperactive child and it's a compliment. You see, it's amazing and it's not boy-girl related. Some of the boys, I mean, some of some little boyfriends are actually very, very easygoing. They want to eat pizza and just do puzzles. While Samaya is unstoppable where gymnastics are concerned. She's always hanging upside down. All my friends know she goes on people's shoulders. And that's how you understand that this child needs a lot of physical activity. Now in the lockdown, what can we do? If you all have time, because it depends if the family is working as well, well, get into an online course. There are so many online courses where jumping exercises are concerned, you know, aerobic exercises for children are concerned. Any activity where physical expression, kinesthetic exercises, you know, knee to elbow, elbow to knee. So make sure, but be mindful. Observe, when does my child get cranky? And that is the time for you to note and say, okay, I'm going to give him or her this dose of physical activity. And this is also not the time to be very, very strict about your parenting skills because this is the time to be gentle with yourself and gentle with children because they are trying to adapt. So allow yourself. It's okay if the child watches a little extra TV than, than most days. I mean, Samai doesn't watch TV except the evening. But now that I'm having a live chat and so that she doesn't barge in, I've set her to see something like maybe a Mojo series, which is all on mindsets, which is all about how to really use your mind. Uh, and, you know, you, you, you can make wise choices. So I hope uh, I've helped you in some way, dear Prajekta. We move on to Mr. Siddharth Sachdev. Hi, thank you so much for your question. As a parent, how do I measure my success? By the quality of relationship with my child or how effectively I can control him? Darling Siddharthji, there is no controlling. Mindfulness is all about letting go of hierarchy. We've realized with time, and this is scientifically proven, so there's a lot of science behind mindfulness. We have to treat children as equals. Now, this worries people. They're like, what? I'm not going to be the boss. But look at the bosses you work with. Let's take the example of Ratanji as well. I mean, he's been my boss when I've worked with Pravashi. I'm one of the boards. It's just amazing. He never portrays himself as a boss. He's firm, but yet he consistently motivates you, nurtures you and shows you the path that you can walk on. And that's what a parent needs to do as well. That we don't have to prove a hierarchy. Just like we say, confident even Ratan Tata for that matter. He's not busy showing who's boss. So children know that you are the boss. But when we give them equality, the expression is concerned. There was a wonderful lady, Anshika Jain, who's joining us, who tweeted about something brilliant, that parenting is all about listening. Ch children need to share. So what you said right in the beginning, how do I measure my success by the quality of relationship? Yes, the presence, the interaction that you have, 
the growth mindset. Now, growth mindset basically is a mindset where you tell your child, listen, go out there and try new things. And mama and papa love you in spite of your mistakes. Have you ever said that to someone? Because it scares us. It scares children to make mistakes. Have you seen a child, you know, sometimes they drop milk and they go, <laughs> have you seen that? Because they're so scared. Abhi, you know, in India, to allow bolna ki thappar pad jata hai. But in India, children are so stressed about doing something wrong because they're so stressed about the reaction, right? This hierarchy that I will discipline you. So what happens is because we as adults have carried these patterns of strict parents, well-meaning parents, because they didn't know any better, strict, well-meaning teachers, well-meaning carers who did not allow us our mistakes. So we grew up as adults who never took chances because we were so scared of failing. So growth mindset is a very good approach, Siddharth, that you have this relationship with your child, which is all about quality. And how do we enhance the quality? By telling the child, you know, I love you the way you are. Whether you come first, whether you come last, I love you. But I know that you can come first. But the beauty is in doing your best now. And so you have presence with your child, as in presence, as in genuinely hear them communicate with them and walk with them but show them the path and they know who's boss they they don't have to be told that uh, but when we punish and reprimand a child there's very little learning just like as 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 an adult if our bosses treat us with a lot of love and respect and motivate us i know you can do it i know you're brilliant i know you're so so gifted we absolutely get energized and we want to do our best for our boss. So we have to tweak our relationship with our children in a similar way. And why? Because if we don't do that, our children grow up to be teenagers who are disconnected with the parents because the moment they've got a better opportunity, they're like, wow, okay, bye-bye, I've heard enough. And we don't want that. And so it's also about reparenting. And I'm going to take a break before I move on to the third question that when we talk about mindfulness, my book begins with the ancient Panchatantra era that hundreds of years ago, Panchatantra really guarded the time in a child's life from zero to seven. They said, this is the time when we want to program the best thoughts into a child's mind. So much so that they would ask women to affirm thoughts of thoughts of positivity to the child in their, in their womb. So the unborn child in the womb, thoughts of perfection, thoughts of positivity, you're brilliant, you're a genius, you're magnificent. No wonder we had scholars during that era. Why? Because science proves today that whatever a child is exposed to during those crucial years forms the architecture of the brain. So your childhood is the template for your life. Now you can go back. Uh, and say, oh my God, my dad was very strict about good behavior. And, you know, everybody at Pravashi knows Papa, Trilogji, my mom, Bira. They all know they're very simple, but very firm about good behavior. So automatically, there's a pattern. I saw a, a, a very comfortable family atmosphere of love, togetherness, respect. So you see the pattern continues in my life. I saw, but it was a pattern. I saw my parents struggle, work hard for money, which was my pattern until I realized and I said, oh great, I need to change this pattern in my life that money can come easily. We need to work smarter, not always harder. So, you know, you need to look within and say, what are my patterns? This is a mindful approach. The more you learn about your childhood, the more the relationship with your own child will flourish because now you'll know, hey, these are critical years. I want them to believe they are brilliant. I want them to believe they can take chances so that they grow up to be individuals who will take chances. Uh, and, and, you know, Ratanji, Shavriji, they're, they're great examples of that because they just took a chance and said, great, we want this education uh, campus like never before. And it is, isn't it? So brilliant. Um, I'm giving in-depth answers because there would, there would be so many questions that parents must have and hopefully they'll get answers through in some um, shape or form. Mrs. Gauri Chauhan, hi. 
thank you for your question. How do I identify the right kind of parenting amongst the different school of thoughts that are available these days? And how do I know that which is the right one for my child? So intrinsically, as a mother, as a father, we know what's best for our child because the child is ours. He's connected to us in thought, in DNA. And even today they say, DNA metaphysicists say, DNA is nothing else but thought. It's thought that you can create, you can change the alchemy in your body, your cells, everything. It's so brilliant uh, with thought. Now, intrinsically, when we're so gifted to connect with a child, why does that balance get lopsided here and there? When we let stress come into our lives, when we get anxiety and when we operate from a scarcity syndrome and that fear that, oh my God, I don't have enough. When we think I don't have enough, you'll always see your child is not enough either. And interestingly, the more we tell ourselves, I'm fine the way I am, you will start loving your child for the way the child is. And from that point, when we nurture them, the children, fly they mo they are motivated to do much more so when you talk about right kind of parenting look inwards don't think about the child as someone or something lesser than you or no higher echelon or a lower echelon in the relationship how would you communicate with your spouse how would you like to be communicated with when you want when someone wants things done from you what, what is the dialogue that you most appreciate? And you will see the same reflection in your child. Ultimately, we humans are very much the same. And my greatest aim today is to make sure these disciplining books where children are concerned just completely get stopped because it's such a wrong approach to discipline them. And discipline is such because when we're insecure, we discipline other people. We want them to change. Of course, we want our children to be well-mannered, but then they don't learn by consistent reprimanding. Be good, man, you, know, you know, showcase good manners and be kind. They become well-mannered when they see their parents being well-mannered. It's so, so interesting. Children are much more obedient than we give them credit for, but they don't listen. They observe. They're like sponges taking everything in. So showcase walk the path that you want your child to follow. That is the parenting style. It is your unique parenting style and you are the perfect mother, the perfect parent to do that. Make sure that this is working and also give positive reinforcement uh, a chance in your life. Yeah, all the parents out there, each word has a frequency, each word has an energy. The more you say it, the more it creates a vibration in your home. When children don't study, that's what parents keep saying. Relatives doesn't, doesn't do well, doesn't study, doesn't study. Constantly saying that the entire house is vibrating with the energy. My child doesn't study, my child doesn't study in the room. My child doesn't study, my child doesn't study. Relatives, my child doesn't study. Teacher, my child doesn't study. Then you go into the child's room. The child is already programmed. I don't study, I don't study. Beta, study it will not make a difference. Remember, we are scientific beings. This is a scientific universe. We operate where thought is concerned. So if you are observing that your child is not studying, it was past habitual thinking habit, past habitual thinking pattern. Let's go back and change it. And now we will say my child studies and affirm, I would want you to study. I know you're capable of studying. So of course, I answered Gauri Chavan, but I'm also elaborating much more so that if there are the other questions, you know, you could form and join the dots. So Gauri Chavan, I hope that helped. Uh, Mrs. Gargi Deshmukh, hi, thank you. Thank you so much. How much is too much? How much should be given to the demands of the children? How much should we run behind the array of options? Of course, is that okay? So first, how much is too much? Again, let's have a mindful approach. Obviously, uh, I'll give you an example in my home. Uh, let's take food for that matter, right? Children want ice cream all the time, of course. So what I do is I just don't have ice creams in my freezer. But whenever we go to the park, of course, if she'll ask for an ice cream, she has to have it. We don't have chocolates at home at all. But of course, if we go to a grocery store and she wants one, by all means, please enjoy it. Now, there are many chocolates that come to us as gifts. I mostly 
you know, give it back to the concierge or to friends and say, please share because we don't want to eat. We don't want to be chocolate monsters. But then this Diwali and then this Christmas, they absolutely go crazy. So we enjoy. There's always a balance that we maintain. But we are very much in touch with the inner radar. Like I said, every child has an inner radar of how much to eat, how much to not. But if we give them TV while they're eating, that inner radar just completely subsides. So have an inner radar, you yourself as a parent. And you can use that for everything in life. How much TV is good TV for you? You will see. What TV ho gaya? We can't be seeing TV and asking them not to. We will have to walk that path. So Sudhanshu and me took a decision that we actually gave up watching TV because firstly, we want to see things which are appropriate for Samaya's age. So then we had to watch Peppa Pig because we saw Peppa Pig, you know, they have very sweet uh, uh, tones with the way they speak with their parents or Mojo, which is all about mindsets, which is all about being positive. So we had to make these decisions. But of course, as adults, we wanted to see things that excited us and entertained us. So we wait for a Saturday night when she's asleep or a Friday evening when she's asleep. So we understood how much is too much. It's totally up to you as a parent. We are a team. We are a family. And the rules that we'll have for our children will be the kind of rules that we will have to follow if we really want the presence and, and equality in our home. And if we want children to grow up as teenagers completely united with our parents, that listen, my goodness, you know, I'm an equal, but I will never ever do anything to upset my parents. That's the bond you'll end up having. So it's all up to you. The, the essence of mindfulness, Gargi, is to tell you that the guru lives within you. We don't spend enough time with ourselves. And if we allow ourselves that time, that communication with self, you'll realize, my goodness, I do have all the answers. And you let go of doubt. Your competition is not with other parents. Your competition is not with other kids. It's you building a beautiful bond with your child. And your child is brilliant. Brilliant. Um, how much should we run behind the area of options of courses that are available? That's child to child. Now, because I mentioned that Samai is a hyperactive child, even after kindergarten, she comes out of kindergarten, jumping, 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 jumping. Jump, jump. like, my goodness, this is like three o'clock and this girl is not tired. So boys are tired while Samai is like jumping. So I give her a snack and then, you know, she goes for ballet. She goes for football. But I want to do football. I'm like, okay, fine. Let's go and let's try it. Uh, she loves painting as well, but she likes messy plays. So everything has to be filled with drama. But I make sure, I'm like, no, that's enough. I make sure that by the evening, she has almost two hours completely to herself doing nothing. We also have to enjoy the art of doing nothing. And children are creative beings. So don't ever worry classes Like I said, your competition is not with other parents, not with other children. You have a unique bond with your child. That's it. For you, your child is precious, whether he performs or not. From this unconditional point of love, you make the decisions. Okay, sweetheart, are you enjoying this? But yes, of course, we also need to encourage, motivate and nurture them. Because many a times, especially today, if I ask Samaya, what do you want to do? I just want to lie down and dream. And I say, of course, we'll do that. And we will surely do that. We don't, we don't want to do that all day. So many a times I want to lie down and dream, but I have to get up because I want to inspire her that, hey, let's do something active uh, or let's get active. So it's up to you. But definitely make sure that you have a peaceful evening for children where, you know, they can just learn to entertain themselves. Play with nothing. Just be. Create. Write. Uh, like Monica is the co-founder of Author in Me, where they, where they believe that every child is a writer. All of us are writers. We all have stories to, to write and share. So write. That's such a mindful practice. Dr. Amit Prabhu. Hello. Thank you so much for your question. Sometimes you see your child suffer. One mind says that make them brave enough to face the situation and that's how let them grow. And on the other hand, you feel like interfering and helping them. So how do I decide that when should we support them or when should they, uh, when should we let them on their own? Beautiful question. Thank you. Oh, now, helping your child is not interfering. So be kind to yourself. 
do not judge yourself. That's a lovely parent. Of course, it comes from a place of care and love. I'll give you a personal example that uh, when Samaya started her kindergarten, it was the toughest time for her. This is a very outwardly seems like a, because we, we'll always get to know our children with time. So outwardly seems a very confident girl, very confident, makes friends, goes and talks to everybody. Hi, what's your name? What do you do? Are you married? And all of these kind of questions she would ask people. So I thought that she'll be really easy with the kindergarten. She went to the kindergarten, enjoyed, saw it on the day when she had to meet her teachers. And then I said, now it's kindergarten day. And I've written about this in depth in, in the book uh, where the growth mindset is concerned. And it's so interesting that it was the toughest time for her. She took a year and a half to adjust. Amidji, can you believe it? And this is not just crying. This was howling at another level. I was shocked. I was absolutely, you know, as, as you're feeling like I really was struggling. I wanted to help her. And I felt, my goodness, this is so tough. I mean, am I doing the right thing? I don't want her to go. All these different kinds of thoughts were coming in my mind. And it's very tough for parents, right, to drop the child. The child is howling and to walk away. It was like, oh my goodness, I had to really practice mindfulness. But growth mindset taught me one thing. Consistently tell them, you can do it. Mama and Papa are right here. You can do it. Mama and Papa are right here. Mistakes make your brain grow experiences make your brain grow and this is what I would tell Samaya you know why because the moment she learned and I said Samaya you know this is a challenge the scary monster is telling you cry mama's not gonna come back the scary monsters I'm almost getting emotional talking about it because it was such an emotional time for me and I would tell her don't be scared the scary monster is scaring you but you have a brave monster within and just tell that brave monster, listen, my mama is coming back after kindy. My mama is coming back. She would cry and she would tell her lovely kindergarten teacher, my brave monster, mommy is coming back. And teacher would say, yes, yes, mommy always comes back. Dali, mommy. I said, brave, Samaya, you've been brave today. And the growth mindset teaches a child because once they conquer that challenge, that fear, that is a lesson for life, Amitji. So, emotional, isn't it? At least for me. So. Don't worry, your child is not suffering. If you program it as a thought that's suffering, then the child will suffer. It's like, yay, it's a challenge. It's fantastic. Let's go for it. Let's show everybody you're brave. It's so amazing. And most importantly, let's show the scary monster that's scaring you that you're brave. And this is a very important, if our educators you know, are listening, it's so important for us to teach children early in their life that challenges are very important. Uh, failing is very important because that's when we learn challenges failures in life we teach our children history geography math everything but what are the problems we face when we grow up heartbreak how to recover from heartbreak that it's not personal rejection it's okay if someone rejected my idea not a problem today i feel like eating chocolate ice cream that doesn't mean vanilla ice cream will cry i'm rejected so you could teach them this hey listen rejection is not personal it's a matter of choice it'll happen tomorrow you keep trying and growth mindset is about challenges that I will not give up. The more I try, the more the challenge becomes easy. The more I try. So the conversations with your child need to tilt towards being brave, to being, listen, this is amazing. This is a lesson for life. You did it. So that's how a child learns to walk, isn't it? It's so amazing. They never give up. They're not bothered about who's walking left. Of me. Are you walking faster than me? They're not concerned. A little toddler like, I'll walk, I'll walk, I'll walk. Focus, focus, focus. Get there. Focus, focus, focus. And then they walk and they're like, yay. And then they fall again. <laughs> but they get up. And what we adults have lost, right? That mindful approach of getting up is because we're so busy thinking, I'm going to be judged. I'm going to be judged. Are we going well on time? Okay, fabulous. And then we have Mrs. Sonia Buffner. How does one deal with insecurities between the siblings and how does one make sure it doesn't become a bigger problem in the future? No comparisons. No comparisons. So firstly, mindfully see. Many a times we ourselves speak uh, negatively almost 
unaware that these sponges are listening. So we could be with a friend and a little baby, right? The little baby and the older child is around playing. We could say, you know, I feel so bad, you know, because the little baby, I'm constantly feeding this little baby. And, you know, my little, uh, let's say if it's Sony, right? So Mrs. Sony, uh, Mrs. Sony has written. Yes. So it's Mrs. Sony who's written that. So suppose your child is Rohan. You say, Rohan ko bura lagta hoga. Dekho, I'm constantly all day with the baby. Rohan is like, mm, really? Bura lagta, bura lagna chahiye. Because suddenly Rohan had no concept of this. So you be absolutely easy. Be kind on yourself. Bravo. You have two children. Bravo. Be kind. Do not think about comparisons. So they know that they're not competing with each other. Make sure, watch yourself, be mindful. When you're praising someone, then praise the other as well. And if you want them to improve, the only comparison should be with their own past. And the only comparison would be, listen, you could be brilliant tomorrow about their future. So the comparison between children essentially should stop. Comparison between adults basically should stop. And we compare so much that that's why most of us adults have grown up with insecurities, right? We don't think we're beautiful enough. We don't think we're successful enough. We don't think they're perfect enough because we've always told, huh? first aana chahi class mein, then baat banti hai. Aray, number one hoona chahi, tab baat banti hai. Isse bol bol ke bachun ko subliminally program kar de, you're not perfect the way you are. But you have to tell them, no, you all have a genius within. And if Einstein said that, who are we to argue? He said, everyone is a genius and they will shine at their right time. Mrs. Rupsi Grover, how do I inculcate the love of reading in my son? How do I make him pick a book over a toy? Mm. Well, a toy is also fine for sure. But yes, picking a book over a video, that is essential. Because when we watch TV, semi-coma viewing, it stills the brain. It offers no, no impulses. But reading a book or even hearing a story is very, very powerful. It releases the empathy hormones. It makes you bond as a family. So one of the most amazing things that you can start with, um, dear, dear Rupsi, is start reading. You don't have to read all day. But start a lovely routine, a ritual that before you all go to bed, you all will get together as a family and read together. So pick one lovely book that your husband and you or you and your partner or you yourself can read and the children can just listen. You see, children learn the language at the age two, three, four, and then start learning to write it. So intricate words make it very difficult for them to read. So I don't know the age that you're talking about. And then for them to read, Read and process the words and everything takes away the joy of reading. Or once they've, uh, one second. Okay, I'm just going to put this, my battery of the phone. So I'm going to continue. That once they start to process reading uh, and get used to reading by seven, eight, when they start to read, they understand, my goodness, then academics take over. So they have to read so much where books and you know their history, geography, maths takes over. So the actual love for reading does not come about and is not not uh, you know um, given its due credence. So start reading together as a family, and then you will see all the lovely results. I hope you all are comfortable. I've got to do this uh, so that I'm on the phone. Okay, great, and the battery doesn't run. Uh, Dr. Mohit Bangria, how to make a child realize that what discipline we are trying to inculcate in him or her, we are teaching them, which is ultimately good for them. You would have just known by now that I'm against disciplining. <laughs> it's like, oh God, she's crazy. No, because disciplining is all about control and we want them to feel free we want them to be authentic we want them to know that they are perfect the way they are and through that point we want to guide them to be just like us so you have to show him or her your child as to what is right what is wrong through your own behavior but you have to first allow them their expression and many a times also change the perception that children are not being bad you know we always say my goodness my child is really giving me a bad time no your child is going through a bad time even adults 
we don't express our pain so beautifully, right? We don't talk, like, don't talk to me. And so how can we expect little children who are just forming their language skills to be understood? So, you know, you can inculcate all the good values. Like, I'm sure you all, all the ones, all the lovely families I've met in Nasik and everyone who's watching us, I think we all have the good within. So we have to let that be expressed. And when we form our boundaries at home with good behavior, a child will know. A child will never ever realize that, oh, I can get away with this. Just like an office, when you know that the big boss is so gentle, is so kind, but is firm and wants us to be extremely professional, we will never take a chance, isn't it? We'll never, because we know it's not going to be allowed. So the boundaries are set in a very mindful manner. Hope that helps. But don't go through the, you know, through the path of discipline because the child will lose its own original, original personality. Okay. Mr. Abhijit, uh, how important is spirituality when it comes to kids growing up and how can we get started? Well, where religion is concerned, it's, of course, your personal choice. It's, it's based on rituals. But spirituality is powerful. It's all about looking inwards, connecting to your inner world, as Swami Vivekananda said, completely connected to your own inner child. And that's why people are finding it difficult during the lockdown, isn't it? My goodness, they don't have their you know, superficial trappings. Restaurant mein jana hai. They want to go and shop for clothes. They want to do all sorts of things that would take them away from connecting with the soul. Akele ke kya karenge? My goodness, so a solitary person who's like a genius, like say Amish Tripathi, Raju Hirani. These are people who love being alone. This is another programming mistake that we do when, uh, you know, teachers, uh, well-meaning teachers, well-meaning parents, you know, look at a child sitting alone. They say, oh, this child is not social. It's, it's, okay. it's okay. Maybe the child is a genius like Einstein. Einstein Hamisha he would always sit alone. So that's okay. Why do we think a child has to be with five different friends and social to be cool? No, that's, that's culture has trained us to think of it this way. Some people are talkative people. Some people are introspective. And that is a genius too. So allow them. Allow them that. And spirituality is a brilliant thing. It's a foundation of everybody's life. To just close our eyes and to think about oneself is spirituality. To forgive someone is spirituality. To forgive oneself is spirituality. To not judge someone is spirituality. To say you are brilliant and I believe in you is spirituality. So it's a very modern science, but we link it with maybe bells and, and uh, beads. Uh, but it's so, so much more uh, greater than that. So it's a lovely thing that you would like to inculcate that. Um, the best thing to start is sitting together talking about your childhood, talking about dreams. What do you like to do? What you don't like to do? Look into your child's eyes. Be still. You don't have to share anything, but just talk, just look. Uh, and, and, you know, and then share what mindfully comes to your mind. That was a spiritual and a mindful activity. Read together, paint together and uh, go uh, now it's difficult to go out but but just plant plant some lovely saplings a little bit of gardening together cooking together all these are forms of spiritual and mindful expressions abhijit hi oh no i already oh, that was abhijit's um, abhijit ji's question and now i have the last question by karishma because after that we're going to uh, welcome monica so the 10th question is, whenever in doubt, I ask questions to my child. I get very easy, satisfying answers from him. He gives me all the formulas and secrets to the right parenting, which is why I'm very rigid to any other suggestions. Is that the right approach? That's wonderful. If you can have a conversation so free with your child, where you don't have any hierarchy, no ego, because it's always ego when we say, listen to me. You know, when we say, mommy is saying so, papa is saying so. You know, because children say, why should I do that? And they say, because papa said so. We say, no, because mommy said so, finished. So, but if you have that beautiful conversation with your child where you're saying, hmm, you know, what works for you? When do you feel sad? When do you think you're not being heard? 
what approach works you tell me you don't feel like studying but sweetheart we have to learn because this is life doing our best today and i want you to reach your potential i want you to put in your best and you are brilliant you are so gifted so tell me what should we do what should we do to inspire you imagine if we have that kind of a conversation at home you'll also start to maybe realize hey my child is much more gifted in sports my child actually loves theater cinema my child is brilliant in computers so these are the kind of uh, insights you will find so amazing well done if you're having conversations with your children those were very very beautiful questions very insightful questions but then all of you all are so insightful like i said we all have an intrinsic perfect parent living within it's just that we have to let go of being judged we have to stop judging ourselves we have to stop this competition with other parents or children or anyone else um darling mona lisa and my darling megna shall we welcome monica on screen please yes ma'am thank you thank you so while monica joins us i'd like you all to know about monica she lives um close to london she lives in england and she is the co-founder of a wonderful company called author in me which she runs with another lovely lady ekta and monica sood basically believes that every child is a writer every child is creative and she does some amazing programs with children but her love is also for science and she's the associate member of the british neuroscience association so she's going to come here and tell you the science behind mindfulness the science behind what was i saying was you always say ye to bol rahe hain bol rahe hain magar iska kuch proof hai kya so she's going to tell you all about the proof uh so let's welcome monica hey monica can you see us hi hi can hi i see you uh i can see hi, you now hi monica hello hi well thank you thank you rax thank you for having me here and uh, hello to everyone who's listening to us uh can you hear me though properly uh i don't know if the others can but it's it's just a, there's a lot of delay that's okay no worries so while while you're here i wanted to start with adaptability right because i told them that during lockdown it is the time for them to really give adaptability a lot of uh uh thought that never worry about change so i talked to them about in 66 million years back when the asteroid hit the planet how the strongest species did not survive but the most flexible agile mentally the ones who could adapt are the ones who survive so i told them there is not really important to always be strong you know we always give so much importance but it's the strength in the mind the resilience and then i wanted to tell them about the nasa program i was telling them about the 30 day program so nasa said that these astronauts when they go into space they see everything inverted so now will they have hallucinations will they fall ill will they faint so they put them on this 30 day program wearing convex lenses so they saw everything inverted can you imagine how difficult that would be so they were eating with the convex lenses sleeping working having a shower all day long they could not take off the glasses and they're extremely agitated frustrated unhappy because imagine seeing everything ulta pulta they were like oh my goodness i want to throw these lenses they struggled but they persisted guess what happened on the 30th day in spite of wearing the convex lenses the brain said oh you're trying to adjust you're trying to adapt so in spite of wearing the lenses the brain switched and they could see things right side up so that's how powerful the brain is it will adapt if you stick to your course so whether this lockdown if we change our lives or we don't we walk through this pandemic and this could be the new future how are we going to change our lives with this new reality don't worry about what's going to happen tomorrow worry about what's going to happen today because your life is in miniature where each day is concerned So Monica you uh, stressed a lot on adaptability and then you gave, uh, we, we both have created a wonderful program for Fravashi and everybody who is joining us that they could focus on mindfulness which is the gratitude part learning a new skill creativity and then we're talking about positive thoughts and the science behind why negative thinking is so bad so should we start with gratitude and mindfulness 
Yes, definitely. Uh, Rax, uh, uh, as we know that gratitude is one virtue. If we in in uh, you know if we inculcate that virtue in us, it automatically reduces the stress. It automatically reduces the anxiety. And even a research says that they have seen twenty three percent drop in the hormone called cortisol, which is responsible for anxiety yes. and stress. It, it is 23% reduced. So science proves that just focusing on this value of gratitude, where you are appreciating others, where you are thanking others, whatever you have, you, you show gratitude to that. It automatically uh, takes away stress and anxiety and it brings happiness and uh, power of, you know, uh, well-being. You, you feel now. more healthy mentally and physically both. So yes, definitely gratitude is something, you know, we should all focus on. So for example, you know, uh, uh, it's a good point to talk about awareness and addiction. So during lockdown, everybody is watching the news. So please be aware. Sure, you want to be aware, but don't get addicted to the news because that will bring a lot of stress into your life. Instead, if you watch it, because you have to, like, for example, if my husband is an international law barrister, he has to watch the news. Make sure that you watch it in the afternoon, where it's not really seeped into your psyche, like mornings and late nights. Watch it in the afternoon, stay abreast, and immediately bring your mind to the gratitude, the present. Hey, but that's not my reality. I'm grateful I'm healthy. I'm grateful my children are healthy. I'm grateful I'm living in a home. I'm grateful I can eat dal rice. Is that what you mean? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Whatever you have with you, you know, just be thankful to that because we are we are really fortunate that we are living in a good house. We are getting our food. Our we are healthy. You know, so we should be grateful for what we have with us and try to appreciate others as well. You know what they do for you. So like NHS, their medical doctors, and all over the world. So yes, yeah. yeah. can you hear me? Because yes, yes, I could hear you. I could hear you. So, so gratitude is number one. So they could start with a gratitude journal, the family together, they could have this amazing mindful activity where they all have a family journal. And every day as you wake up, write five things that you're very grateful for. And this is what I do. You know, and I used to do that, even when I wanted certain things to come true in my life, like when I wanted to get pregnant, or when I wanted, uh, you know, a career opportunity or even work with uh, Penguin. It was so amazing that I actually started writing it as a gratitude note. But thank you so much, dear universe, that Penguin and I are working together. Thank you so much, dear universe, for my baby as a lovely gift. And today, then I bring it back to the present. Thank you so much. I have a beautiful, safe home to live in. Thank you so much that I get a decent meal to eat. So what happens is your brain gets programmed to focus on the good things in life. And with the reticular activating system, anyone who's interested in more science can learn on this, that we start building new filters in our brain. And then automatically within weeks, you can see a change that you'll only start to see things that make you happy. It's such a shift and I cannot, cannot recommend the gratitude exercise enough. So we move on. So uh, adaptability, thinking about adaptability, gratitude journal, and third, you are recommending learning a new skill. Yes. Uh, mostly, you know, people believe that learning a new skill is reserved for children and, you know, teens. So they think they cannot learn something new, but it is, it is not true. Science says that uh, be, because our brain is malleable and uh, due to this incredible uh, capability of brain, which is called neuroplasticity, we can form new connections anytime in our life. At any age. At any age, yes. And more we use those connections, more they get strengthened. And th those that are not used, they get pulled away. So it is an amazing ability. And we can learn any skill at any age. And moreover, when we indulge ourselves in something that we learn, we love to learn, uh, it creates hormones called uh, happy chemicals, uh, which are like serotonin and others, dopamine, they are released, which automatically, organically boost our overall well-being. So it is so good to learn something new that, you know, organically boosts your uh, health and well, you know, mental health and physical health. So yes, we should, we should indulge ourselves in something learning new. That's amazing. No wonder children are so happy. 
always because they're constantly learning, right? And we think, oh my goodness, wo age nikal gayi, that only, you know, youngsters yeah. can learn and children learn. But now science proves that no, you can, uh, you can learn even if you're 105. So uh, wonderful. Pick, pick whatever um, you appreciate. Pick something that you're drawn to. And try to learn a new skill. And there are so that's the best thing about the lockdown is there are so many free online courses. There's so much out there. And you can learn. Like I've seen, you know, my husband, let's not tell him, but he could not even boil water except the kettle. And I was very, very uh, protective of my kitchen. But as a barrister can do it all, as Ratanji and everybody predicted, he is amazing. He started cooking. He started cooking me, cooking me, <laughs> cooking the most beautiful, beautiful recipes. I cannot believe it. It's a mindful, therapeutic thing to do. So, and it's amazing. So it's amazing how happy he feels after cooking a lovely meal. Of course, I clean up the kitchen after that. But it's amazing. It's, it's amazing. Yes. So uh, learn a new skill, everybody. Parents, children, teachers, carers, educators. Go out there. What, what can I learn? No stress. You know, just enjoy. The entire idea is to enjoy. And then you talk about uh, harnessing, honing creativity. Creativity. Again, you know, we consider that creativity is, uh, is restricted with, you know, uh, for example, when we say creativity, we think that uh, it is not possible to be creative, whereas creativity is an innate ability. We unlearn this skill as we grow. We think, you know, oh, we cannot paint, so we, we are not creative. We cannot write creatively, so we are not creative. Whereas creativity is uh, th doing things in your day-to-day -day life. For example, oh, yeah. yeah, for example, if you are uh, making a new uh, dish, you are, you know, putting creative. different so you are being creative here you are solving problems in day-to-day -day life you're coming up with different solutions you are being creative so believe that creativity can be learned and when we uh, the most important thing to remember is don't get stressed when you are thinking of creative ideas just <laughs> be mindful be relaxed <laughs> yeah and you know, Monica, I also believe that we've bought into culture, right? Because culture, and it perhaps starts in school, starts at home, where we make those divisions. This, my child is very creative. This child is good in maths. No, yeah. that's just because we have used or, or cemented those neural pathways. But you can yes. create more and then strengthen those, which we, don't learn, uh, which we don't realize. And that's why the growth mindset is brilliant. Growth mindset brings us to that point that no, your brain is malleable. You can actually learn anything you want as long as you put your heart and soul and with consistent atomic habits. So mm -hmm. we all are creative. And yes, you said it so beautifully that even cooking, the yes. way we dress up can be creative the way we talk to our children today we're going to be mindful that's a creative way any creation and we create all the time we, we even create so many negative thoughts that is our next thought. so we are oh my goodness if 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 we could if we could tell that to our parents and our, uh, and our children and everybody we are brilliant at creating negative thoughts why is that monica why is why is this that we think so many negative thoughts because our brain is genetically programmed to think negatively. But obviously we can, as you said, with growth mindset, with malleable brain. So it's one question, sorry, sorry. So you mean it's programmed to think negatively because fear, right? We're constantly worried about something, either worried about what went wrong or worried about what could go wrong. So the brain basically wants to protect you. Exactly, because our brain is continuously buzzing with electrical and chemical act activity and throughout the day, you know, it's, it builds up scenarios uh, of positive uh, positivity and negativity and what we do, we start in engaging with those uh, scenarios that we make, you know, so it becomes really hard for us to get out of that circle. So main thing is when we are thinking about uh, positive things, Yes. For example, when uh, you say by thinking negative beliefs, what we are doing, we are producing uh, hormones, stress producing hormones, yeah, which can shut down the ability to think, shut down of rational, rational thinking. So whereas when we think on positive notes, positive thoughts, what happens inside our brain? 
the chemistry is changing. We are yeah. creating new habits where we are thinking positively, where we are creating organically boosting the production of happy hormones. So it is important that we should build on positive thoughts. And moreover, our brain cannot distinguish between uh, our ears and what we see. If we think, you know, we are not safe, our brain perceives it. Yes, you are not safe. And it, the body reacts then accordingly. In the same you know, way. Yeah. So it is important that if we want to be happy, if we want to create healthy atmosphere, healthy environment inside our house, in with, within, we have to uh, think on positive thoughts. You know, start meditating. But also, what thoughts. you said, and I wanted to add this so that everybody could understand. That's why mindfulness is so important. What, what Monica is trying to say is that the brain cannot differentiate when you're thinking, a dog is attacking me, a dog is attacking me, how he attacked me. And if re in reality, a dog attacks you, it's the same message for the brain because the brain cannot differentiate. She's thinking about it or it's really happening. But mindfulness can actually help the brain understand that there's a difference. Why? Because where mindfulness is concerned, you actually step and train your mind to say, oh, I was thinking about the brain. Oh, I was thinking about the dog attacking me. So the brain realizes she's observing her thoughts pass away. So in the same way, a negative thought, that person really hurt me. That person broke my heart. That person took away all my money. The person ruined my business. We are engaged. So we're emotionally engaged. We're actually feeling all those emotions, getting angry. You can see people's faces, right? Sometimes you look at a person and, and in the campus, I'm sure people say, it's come out, take me. Because you're going through those emotions and the brain is like saying, I'm stressed. And the brain puts danger, stress, fear, apprehension, anxiety, frustration, all in a similar vortex. So it wants to protect you from danger. Hence, your neurons from the frontal lobe immediately go into the fear pockets. Once the fear pockets are there, the pleasure pockets get stopped. You lose creativity, you lose productivity, you lose that essence of now. So it's very important for positive reinforcement or affirmations. So that's very important, Monica. Yeah, affirmations are really important. Again, you know, affirmation, all these positive things, they directly affect our brain. Chemical activity, electrical activity, all are affected. For example, when we say, I, I am good enough, I can do this. So what happens inside the brain? Motivation molecule is released, which is called dopamine. Again, it sets us into action immediately. We, we just get motivated when we think of positive uh, reward waiting for us. You know, when we say that, oh, yes, I can do this and I, I can be when you when you achieve something, you automatically become happy. So all these positive thoughts about yourself can make your brain work in favor of you rather than otherwise, you know, what happens? We brood on negative thoughts and what happens? Mind becomes an invisible opponent for us. You know, we wow battling against our own mind and most of us are not even aware of that situation you know we, wow. we waste so much time fighting against those imaginary fears negative thoughts we basically shut our brain down it's it's not it loses ability to think creatively i think love it efficiency you know it it just love loses it. its power and it's so important for children i just thought the moment you were talking about fear it's amazing to consistently think fear, F-E-A-R. Fear, experience appearing real, false evidence. That's what it means. Yes. I, I just remembered it because I read it somewhere and I, it made so much sense that the moment you're fearful of something and that's why parents don't build any fears in children. You're not going to do well when the child is not studying. You'll fail. The child then gets programmed to think that way. In fact, think about what you want and hence program them with what you want. You will do well, sweetheart. If you work hard, I know you will be so proud of yourself. We want you to do your best. I see you winning. I see you happy. I see you flourishing. Uh, so it's so important. And anytime there's fear, because parents have a lot of fears, right? We have to pay the bills. We have to work and we have to look after children. I understand it's not an easy thing. But you want to make sure that you're giving your best to your child. So anytime you have fear, false evidence appearing real. Yes. 
it's so powerful to tell tell yourself that so great so um we're going to focus on being adaptable to the situation right monica so everybody from now on you're going to say not going to complain we're not going to complain about the lockdown we're not going to complain about online uh, services we're not going to complain i'm just going to pick my laptop not going to complain about anything anything we're just going to do our best now what can i do now to adapt what can i do now so that i rise from this like a phoenix the second thing we're going to program our brain towards thinking something that we're grateful for because monica's told you the science behind it if we focus on what we have rather than what we don't have we will start increasing that aspect in our life so gratitude also you know i mean when someone thanks you all the time you want to do more for them isn't it when your child says thank you mama thank you papa you feel great when your spouse says thank you so much thank you so much in fact it's so interesting you can use it as a technique if you want your spouse to speak softly to you give you gifts love you much more you can start say thank you so much for giving me such lovely gifts and so uh, like mm, ping, get a light bulb i have to get a gift thank you so much for speaking so kindly with me ping, like was i <laughs> suddenly the, the, the spouse is beautifully positively reinforced to behave that way so gratitude is lovely and uh, then you talked about learning new skills so the third point is get together as a family what can we learn together you know even when we were talking about the hyperactive child is great to maybe have a board game with all the physical exercises put together it's amazing there are such fun board games do 50 jumps uh, you know two circles of the entire home hop skip and jump and uh, jumping jack suddenly everyone's like super fit because <laughs> they're doing everything connected with learning a new skill uh, yeah, and then the fourth I, even i was mentioning that you know with my daughter i for example if you want to introduce new words and in my classes as well you know i make it as a game when they want to learn something new i want to act out you know i want them to act out the word and then i try to guess it so it makes a game it becomes a game creativity. for them yes so again creativity and learning something new combines together so yes so yeah so uh, you know our next point was creativity and then positive thoughts we learned about the science that when we consistently think negative thoughts we actually ruining our brain uh, you know we are just shutting off all the motivation centers in our brain and so you will lose productivity you will lose creativity and you will become a person who's constantly fearful so start the habit of positive affirmations you could go in front of the mirror together as a family and affirm something we want something that you desire and the more and more you affirm something positive you'll see you'll see the change and you can try that with children right now ask them to do something that they're shy of like uh, going on stage or reciting a poem you know and someone wants to do it but they can't do it affirmations are brilliant just affirm i am confident i love my voice i love the way i speak and when they say it and make them say it again and again and again and again and again and again and again suddenly they're like a different energy altogether any parting words uh, monica i just want to say you know during these times just stay positive build new routines where you can be mindful for example do gardening together and do uh, cooking together so it will it will bond a lovely it will bond, make a lovely bond with your family and it also gives you organic boost of all these positive uh, happy chemicals you know inside your body so you are you are becoming a family and as well as boosting your health so that's my say on that and don't ruminate on negative thoughts just wow. meditate on positive thoughts basically live like children as building a happy family my book consistently talks about that that start to awaken your inner child reparent yourself pick a picture when you were little in fact that's a lovely uh, activity for you all to do take up the pictures of your own childhood and talk to yourself what did you want to hear when you were a child so building a happy family basically is to awaken your inner child to reparent yourself and the more you love yourself not in a narcissistic way in a healthy way that you're perfect the way you are you don't need to com- compete these social definitions that 
to be a CEO to be successful, a CEO to be happy, have to have these penthouses look a certain way, that doesn't make sense because look at all the people who are falling or are, you know, crippled with mental illnesses are the people who have made it, are the people who have won these definitions. So you see, uh, so in such an interesting way, um, Jim Carrey had said, I wish I can give everyone an Oscar so that everybody realizes it's no big deal the other day. You know, the next day it's back to square one. So learn to connect with your inner self, the authentic self, that I am perfect the way I am. The more you say it, the brain will start believing it and you will start operating as a peaceful, joyous being from that place. So thank you to the entire lovely Fravashi team for you know, hosting Monica and me. And I'm going to invite, uh, you know, is, is Mona Lisa joining us? But I'd also like to say, hey, Fravashi, all my, and it means an angel. So I can actually sense a lot of angels here. So all uh, my Fravashi teachers, parents, students, please note that Fravashi School's virtual camps 2.0 are starting from Monday, 25th May. And I will be in touch with you all to see how you all are doing. So Monica and me send you all our love. Thank you so much for downloading, building a happy family and thank you for spreading the word. We are already receiving so many letters and messages from especially Nasik. So thank you so much. It means the world to us. And you know, we all have a family living within us, even if you're single, because we all have a mama and a papa and lots of children, some are scared, some need more love, some are angry, some are very quiet, some are depressed and we need to nurture them all. So we all have a family living within and we wish you all much love, good health, peace and happiness. Monica? Thank you. Thank you for having us. And I just want to add one point here, Rangeshwari, from your book, because uh, the growth mindset that you have mentioned, mm -hmm. At the end of the chapter, you mentioned, you know, what to say to your child and what phrases you can rephrase. So I would say, you know, to for every parent, please read those little, uh, F, you know, phrases and how it can be rephrased that. That gives you very good insight. And that's wonderful, you know, if we can implement this in our lives. So yes. just that chapter. And, uh, that's right. We never, we never use the word fail. We always say you've just not passed yet. Right. Yes. So yet is such a powerful word because when we use the word fail, we almost program a mind to believe it's over. Well, when we say not past yet, then that's a beautiful journey. It means the journey is not over yet. So, so this is also our intention that, uh, and Lena Usher is taking that on. She was so happy with uh, that mention in the book that she's saying, you know, this is what I'm going to start. I'm not going to tell any child that you failed, but I'm going to say not past yet. So I wish you all much love, a growth mindset, positive affirmations, the power of yes, music, dance, art, messy play, and the oxygen mask theory, which is parents need to look after themselves first. When you do that, you'll become more loving, more gracious parents. So read about all of this in Building a Happy Family. Thank you from Monica and me. Bye, everybody. Dear See you Rangeshwari. soon. Thank you. Hi, Thank you. Mona Lisa. Hi ma'am. In the current scenario across the globe, it's yes. a blessing to have someone like you guiding parents how to build a real happy family. And uh, thank you so much for being here and guiding us today. My and pleasure. I also thank uh, Monica Sood ma'am for joining us and giving her insight with the scientific yeah. approach uh, towards mindfulness. So thank you so much to both of you. And I thank our dear audience also to make this webinar a success. And, and so, yes, yes, absolutely. And, uh, and all, the, all, all the lovely uh, friends who sent us questions. And there was a lovely yes. Anu. Was it Anu? And she tweeted and she said, I hope I get a chance. So lots of love to Anu. We've actually talked about you. Thank yes. you for tweeting. Mm -hmm. Much love to everybody who sent us questions, who did yes. not, but who listened and made our webinar a house full. How amazing yes. is that? Absolutely. Thank you to the entire admin at Travashi as well. May the angels be all around us always.
Thank you so much and stay tuned everyone for the Pravashi World page for more such interesting webinars in future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Rageshwari ma'am. And thank you, Monica ma'am for being thank here. Thank you for having us. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.